When you purchase a home, part of your ownership cost is paying property taxes. It's something that you have to pay every year that you own the home. But most people don't realize that there are three different categories within total property taxes. The first category is school tax. This is a majority of where your property taxes are going to go, and it's how schools mostly make their money, from the property taxes of residential homes, commercial homes, and industrial homes. The second tax is the county tax. And the third is called the city or township tax. It's also referred to as a municipality because different homes that are located in different areas may be located in a borough or a township or a city. Now two homes that might be a mile apart will have drastically different property taxes even though the homes are similar. I like to give this example that a builder builds the exact same home. He puts it one mile away from each other. Two homes exactly the same, single family, three bed, two bath. However, there's gonna be a huge difference with the property taxes, whether it's because of the difference in school district, the difference in the county, or the difference in the city tax. You can see thousands of dollars of differences in property taxes because of the school district, the city, township, or the county. Now we have those three different categories of property taxes and each one of them has a specific due date. This can vary a lot, but let's just use an example of a home in Upper Euclid Township. A home in Upper Euclid Township is located in Chester County, Pennsylvania, and it's located in Downingtown School District. The due date for paying the Downingtown School Tax is July 1st. On the other hand, the county tax is due January 15th, and the township of Upper Euclid Township due date for payment is March 1st. Now this may seem like a lot of information and you're gonna like lose your mind trying to figure out when things are due, what do I need to pay, but you don't have to worry about it. When you're purchasing a home, you're most likely using a mortgage. If you're buying it in cash, good for you, send me some, that'd be awesome. But if you don't have the cash, you're most likely using a mortgage company. The mortgage company at the settlement table, a part of your closing costs, and if those words don't make sense to you, I have a first time home buyer playlist that explains all those words that I just explained. But we're focusing on taxes now. But at settlement table, part of your closing costs goes to property taxes. That amount actually goes to the lender. They hold it in something called an escrow account. As you go about living in this home, you are making mortgage payments and a part of your mortgage payment is actually property taxes. That amount that goes into your property taxes is held in the escrow amount so then when the specific due dates come for your three different categories of property taxes, the lender will pay them out from the escrow amount. So you're still paying for them, it's this the lender is in control of managing it. That takes the worry of these due dates and paying for them out of the equation, but how do we actually calculate the property taxes on the home? Although there's a lot of variation when it comes to property taxes and the specific amounts that counties, school districts, and townships charge, they all have something in common. The thing they have in common is the mill rate. The mill rate is a specific equation each township, county, and school district uses or charges in order to get their correct amount per year in taxes. But to give a good definition of what the mill rate is, I also refer to it as millage rate. Investopedia does a really good job. The definition is the mill rate is the amount of tax payable per dollar of the assessed value. It is a figure that represents the amount per thousand dollars of the assessed value of the property, which is used to calculate the property tax. That might not make sense to you now, but let me give you an example. So we talked about the Upper Euclid Township before. The county of Chester County charges a 4.551 mill rate. Right now that means nothing to you, but I'll explain in a second. Let's use an example that the home's assessed value, not its market value, it's an assessed value, is $150,000. Okay, so if we take the 4.551, multiply that, by 150,000 and then we divide it by a thousand dollars like the definition says that will give us 
the amount that we have to pay if we owned a home in Upper Yukon Township. Now that amount specifically is $682.65. And I'm going off the millage rates for this year. The millage rates can be adjusted either up or down as time goes on. We have the equation and we know how much we pay Chester County for the full year of my property. However, there's two different categories that we still need to figure out. Luckily, we can look online to figure out what the millage rate for what the school district is and what the township is. The township has a millage rate of 1.034. So we can already see without having to do any more math, how much we're gonna pay for the township is already going to be less than what it is for the county of Chester County. So doing that equation of the millage rate of 1.034, aka the mill rate, multiplying it by the assessed value, dividing that by $1,000 will equal how much we have to pay per month. So in this example, it's $155.10. Okay, so we got two out of the three out of the way, but we gotta figure out likely the most expensive one, which is the school district. Now the school district's mill rate is 30.711. So 30.711 times 150,000 divided by 1,000. That equals $4,606.65. Whew, man, that's a lot of math. I know, I'm sorry, bear with me. We know the three different categories of taxes, we just have to add them all together. So 4,600, Six dollars sixty-five cents plus one hundred and fifty-five dollars and ten cents plus six hundred eighty-two dollars and sixty-five cents will equal your total of five thousand four hundred and forty-four dollars and forty cents. Is what you should pay per year if your assessed value is correct. As I mentioned before, we were using only the assessed value. Now the assessed value is calculated in different manners within different counties. For example, in Berks and Chester County, Pennsylvania, it's very easy because they use something called the common level ratio. Now the common level ratio is a percentage that changes every year that you can utilize to say, my market value is this, the common level ratio is that, so my true assessed value should equal that, right? If we have two of the parts of an equation, we can figure out the third fairly easily. Let's give an example. Like I said, we were using $150,000 for an assessed value. For 2024, the common level ratio for Chester County is 33.9%. So what we would do is $150,000 divided by 33.9% to give us the market value. Now that equation equals $442,477.88. If we believe that our home is valued a lot less than $442,000, we have a right to appeal based off of this equation. It's actually quite easy. The hardest part is figuring out what your property is worth. I'll get into that in a little bit. Berks County, Chester County, they have the common level ratio, but not every county does that. Let's give another example of a very close county, the one right next to Berks and Chester County actually, is Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Now Lancaster County, Pennsylvania does a mass appraisal calculation. According to their website, a mass appraisal for property tax purposes is guided by the concepts of market value and uniformity. Uniformity requires that like properties be assessed similarly throughout the county. Lancaster County completed a county-wide reassessment that became effective January 1st, 2018, and the predetermined ratio is 100%. What that means is Lancaster County is saying that their assessed value is basically the same as its market value and they did it in an overall mass appraisal calculation. Now usually the tax assessed value is not exactly the same as the market value. Why? Because the market value changes often and another reason why is because there are such things as homestead exemptions. Basically exemptions to your home on a tax basis so you pay less in overall property tax. Now, in Chester County, to do a tax appeal, you have to submit your appeal either May 1st through the first business day in August. So if you bought a home within six months of 
that due date for that year, you're able to just hand them the document showing that you bought the home and then they know, hey, that's the market value of the home because you bought it and they can assess off that. Then the appeal is super easy. You could also pay for an appraisal to give you a market value. You can use that as evidence and that's really easy. The third option is what's more difficult is if you've owned this home for a long time, you don't feel or don't have the money to pay for an appraisal, but you want to reduce your property taxes. The third option is doing a comparative market analysis, which I do and I've helped many clients with doing this type of appeal. It's basically providing proof that your home is worth a certain amount and that you're being taxed at a much higher rate than that. The estimated market value of your home too high, then you do the tax appeal. If you like this video, please make sure you like, comment a video idea that you'd love to get answers for, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel as it boosts the channel in getting knowledge out there of the real estate world to all those on the internet. Have a good one.